A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom, and read from the prophet Isaiah. The eyes of all were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? Jesus said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. But the truth is, there are many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove Jesus out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But Jesus passed through them in the midst of them, and went on his way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So as we gather together on this fourth Sunday of our ordinary time, we also gather together for Confirmation Weekend in our parish community. And uh, the Confirmation uh, Masses of uh, Saturday night at 7, and of course coming Sunday afternoon at 2, are opportunities for me, and uh, the message I was offering them was a message um, of uh, falling in love with Christ. When we fall in love with Christ, our lives are different. When we fall in love, we our priorities change, we go through a transformation of heart, and we, we prioritize those things that we love the most. And of course, with the grace and power of the Holy Spirit, um, the Holy Spirit helps us uh, respond to God's call to love Him more by serving Him and serving others. And at the heart of this weekend's readings is the second reading from Paul's letter to the Corinthians. It's a very famous reading for many wedding celebrations because uh, St. Paul talks about love and how uh, love is patient, love is kind, love is never jealous. This great gift of love, as St. Thomas Aquinas would say, that uh, true love is a love for the other, for the sake of the other. That when we love someone, we love them not because it benefits us, but we love them because by loving them and supporting them, they become who they're supposed to be. And so uh, St. Paul sees this love that Christ offers to us uh, freely, and, and that love is rooted in, in sacrifice and surrender, that we are called to also do the same. Um, we hear that in the first reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You know, God calls Jeremiah to be a messenger, to go to the people of Israel in a very difficult time to, to tell them to make straight the pathways, to turn back to the Lord, to seek forgiveness. You've strayed too far away. And uh, God, when he, as in those beautiful words of Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I've appointed you to go to the king, to the princes, to the priests. And he says, gird up your loins, which in the modern terminology is roll up your sleeves because it's going to be a difficult job. You're going to be rejected. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be attacked. Um, and uh, But I won't let them break you. you know? I will fortify uh, walls around you to protect you, uh, to guide you. Uh, but it's going to be a difficult, difficult challenge. Uh, you're going to face what seems to be insurmountable odds. And why did, would Jeremiah accept this and say yes to this very difficult and challenging mission? Over well, the very fact of the matter that he loved God the Father. And he was willing to, to do this, in a sense, to lay down his life, to share the good news, to bring the people back. Because, of course, being a messenger, being a witness of God in this world is a challenge. We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be rejected. We're going to be forgotten. We're going to be attacked. And yet what motivates us? What calls us forward? But this great gift of love, because St. Paul in the second reading says, I can have all the knowledge, all the wisdom, all the faith in the world, but if I don't have love, it's all a waste. Because love uh, invites us 
and beckons us to surrender our will to the Father and to sacrifice everything for that which we love. And this is evident in the gospel today. Jesus comes back to Nazareth, preaches in the synagogue, says that this prophecy from Isaiah is happening before their eyes. And the people there know him. They grew up with him. They know his family. And they say, we've heard everything in Capernaum, all the great things you've done. What's in it for us? And it's that sense of selfish love that Jesus has to battle because he knows his mission to proclaim the good news to the ends of the earth, surpassing the people of Israel and to all peoples, God's immense love, mercy, and forgiveness. And he reminds them of that by talking about the time of Elijah and Elisha, in which they too went beyond the people of Israel. And so that upset the people in Nazareth, his, his family, his friends, those people who knew him. And they got so upset that they took, took him to the edge of a cliff to cast him off. And yet Jesus passed by them. Being a missionary, being a messenger of the gospel is a difficulty, is a challenge. Uh, and yet we do this out of love. So for the confirmation candidates, I've been sharing um, three people in my life that um, exemplify, remind me of this sense of immense love, of sacrifice, of service, of surrendering uh, out of a deep sense of love. My first one is uh, by a, a, a student, grade eight student that I coached a well over 20 years ago, basketball. His name was Kevin. And Kevin would do anything. He would walk on fire for me if I asked him to. We would have various drills and different things at practice and all the guys would complain or say, oh, why do we have to do this? Or they're just sort of not into it, obviously. And Kevin would always never complain, would always encourage the guys, say, hey guys, we need to do this. We need to get better. And he was a leader by example because he sacrificed for the sake of the team and he wanted to be the best basketball player he could be. And so Kevin was this great sign of commitment, much like sports, all the things we sacrifice out of love of sports, the discipline that it takes. This is what St. Paul is talking about. Secondly, another witness of faith, of sacrifice, of service, was my dear friend, Father John Pluta, who uh, passed away at the end of August this past uh, year in 2015, uh, was pastor in Godrich for 12 years. And he was retired when I was in Godrich. Uh, We became very, very good and close friends. And he was someone who loved his people sacrificed for for their needs. Um, He was always a fountain of wisdom and knowledge for me when I needed something, I needed advice. I was going through uh, how to handle things in the parish. He was always a gentle, loving spirit with a beautiful smile and always reminded me that the work is at the service of the people. How are they going to be served? How are they going to see Christ? Um, And was a strong support for me. So a witness of a good and loving pastor. And then finally, my saint's name for my confirmation was St. Maximilian Kolbe. St. Maximilian was a Franciscan priest, Polish priest, who during the time of the Second World War was arrested and sent to the concentration camp in Auschwitz. Uh, He there uh, offered his life out of love, a love for Christ and a love for others. During that time, if someone escaped the camp, they would randomly choose 10 people and kill them. This was a uh, a measure to prevent people from escaping because then that would, 10 people's souls would be on your conscience. Nonetheless, someone escaped the camp and they chose 10 people at random and they chose a man who was married, had children. He was pleading with a Nazi officer to let him be because he would hope to see his family again. At this time, uh, Father Maximilian Colby stepped up and said, I'm a Catholic priest. Let me take his place. And the soldier agreed and, and, um, uh, Father Colby, St. Maximilian, ministered to the people uh, that he journeyed with, that he died with. They were poisoned, and he was the last one to uh, live out of the ten. Uh, and yet he paid the ultimate price, the ultimate sacrifice of love. What made him do that? A love of Jesus. Uh, this the, the sight of a bigger picture of the grand scheme of the gift or the mission of the Lord. And, of course, the gift of eternal life, which is our eternal home. So as we continue in our Mass uh, today, we're reminded of God's immense love in our lives, how he loved us first, how he formed us before we were even in the womb. He sends us on mission. We're anointed, we're strengthened to proclaim his good news. May we be faithful, but first and foremost, fall in love with Jesus. Once we do that, and we do that through prayer, through the sacraments, through conversations, through getting to know him more and more, deepening our spiritual lives, and when we fall in love with him, Nothing else matters. We are willing then to surrender our lives uh, 
fall in love, surrender, sacrifice, and serve uh, the Lord, especially by serving those who are in need, by those who are around us, offering mercy and forgiveness. It's out of love that we do those things that, again, seem impossible, seem improbable, and yet we're willing to lay down our lives. May we always do that, but first and foremost, fall in love with the Lord, and then be His faithful and loving disciple.